Hi everyone, welcome back to Takeover Talks, episode two with myself, Daryl. And this episode is all about the next generation in the hair industry. And today I am joined with Emma Brady from Choose Hair and Zoe Tanner from Concept Hair. So ladies, would you like to introduce yourself? Emma, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you so much for having me on here today. Um, so I'm Emma Brady, and I have founded the Choose Hair campaign. And the campaign is to be able to get more students to come into our industry. It's to educate the parents, the teachers, and the students about um, all of the aspects that we've got and the different roles that we've got within the hair industry. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. Perfect. Thank you very much. And yourself, Zoe? Hi again, similar to uh, as Emma said, thank you so much for inviting me on today. Uh, my name is Zoe, uh, I'm the Managing Director of SNG Publishing. One of our titles is Concept Hair Magazine, uh, which is all about supporting the next generation of the UK hairdressing industry. Incredible. And obviously, this is a big topic for me. So obviously, as take a, me hosting Takeover Talks, I was really like, keen to get you both on here. I called you last week and I really wanted to, to like push the next generation into our industry. And I thought straight away, I know both of you and I thought a great, great people to be involved with. So I've got some questions that obviously the industry sort of want to know for both of you. And obviously it's a good topic because we've got the Choose Hair campaign to bring people into the industry. And then we've got Concept Hair magazine that is giving the people who started in the industry a magazine for them that isn't all about the big names in there. It's about how they can progress further in the industry and give them opportunities. So Zoe, I'm just going to start with you first. What is the Concept Hair magazine? What's it about? So Concept Hair is designed specifically for hairdressing and barbering students and apprentices. Um, it is all about helping them with their course. Um, tailoring uh, the content of the magazine so that it inspires them, it gives exercises to support their studies, step-by-steps, -step, educational pieces, but really gaining some insight into the massive opportunities available within the industry. Um, so it's about kind of nurturing them from the very start of their career, um, congratulating them on making that first step into, into the industry, um, and then nurturing them onwards um, until they become qualified. Amazing. As someone who gets the magazine into my salon, my juniors really do appreciate the opportunities that the Concept Hair magazine gives them as well. So thank you for obviously putting it out there for them. And then for yourself, Emma, a little bit more information about the Choose Hair campaign and why is that campaign so important to our industry right now? <laughs> it's really, really important right now. Um, last year, we only had 7,000 people come and take apprentices um, into hairdressing. So that's a huge drop to what it used to be. It used to be around 16,000. So if you think that we've got 40,000 salons in the UK, that's a very, very small amount. It's not just the hair industry that um, apprenticeships are going down. It's throughout the whole of um, all apprentices. So what's important, I think, for us is that there's a lot more competition for us to be able to get those students that are wanting to take an apprenticeship or maybe have thought about it but don't really know where to go so we need to be able to signpost them so it's been it's really crucial that we do speak to the parents and the teachers so <clears throat> the choose hair campaign is very much so giving the information to the teachers so that they can deliver that to students Teachers are incredibly busy and they're amazing people that teach and they've got their core subjects that they teach. It's not their responsibility to know about every single industry. So if as an industry we take that on board and we go in and give them all of the tools, so for instance we'll give them a lesson plan, we'll give them direction as to where the students can go to and answer those questions, it makes it much easier for them to be able to deliver that. So now is a really important time, and especially during lockdown as well. And I see lockdown as actually a great opportunity for us. Previously, we were going directly into the schools um, during National Careers Week. With us being on lockdown now, and we've been speaking to many, many teachers um, that are delivering this information, if we, if we provide it to them in the right format, they will automatically share it to their students because it's adding value to them and to the parents as well. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we are delivering what they need for them to be able to share it out to their students and their parents. Amazing. So I'm just going to carry on with the question straight away for you, Emma. 
is um, how can people support the campaign? And I don't just mean hairdressers. I also mean like <coughs> brands, colleges, salon owners. How can all of us as a collective industry support the campaign? <coughs> Absolutely. So at the moment we've got um, we've got a, a smaller campaign within the larger campaign saying I choose hair because and we're asking people to do those videos and we're trying to get that tidal wave of people being able to think actually why do I choose hair? What is it about the hairdressing industry that really inspires me? So although I'm not behind the chair, I'm still inspired by the hair industry. I'm very much part of it as an employee is as well. You're very much part of the hair industry. And so there's so many different roles that you can be able to do. So we're, we're asking for that to begin with. We're also putting together four industry um, adverts as well. So the adverts are going to be based around. Have you ever seen the um, the army adverts um, that have been on yeah. TV? So they're very fast. They're very quick. It's 30 seconds that we've got to capture them. And that's what we need to be able to do. We need to sort of be able to inspire somebody enough to be able to take that next step. So we're doing four different adverts and those adverts are really important because we're trying to um we're, we're trying to focus on different people so we're focusing one advert on the teachers one advert sorry one advert on the parents because that's uh, the the biggest influence for a student um we then will have a, an a grade student so somebody that's been um incredibly um, achieved very very good grades at school but maybe have been told not to go into hairdressing for whatever reason and then we'll have somebody that's maybe struggling at school and why should they choose hairdressing? So we're trying to get every aspect to be able to show that actually it's it's very much so, um, uh, it, it's an industry that can encompass everybody, no matter sort of what ability you have. You need to have creative flair and, and a real passion. So we're asking for videos, again, so videos of apprentices, any pictures that you've taken. So this can be people that are in the... Um, in the salon and they're currently doing their training it can be behind the scenes so they've helped out a fashion shoot for instance or they've done London fashion week so we can really demonstrate different things that you can do as an apprentice um, so we're asking for that we've got eight ambassadors that work with me and um wow they're amazing what they do actually and what we're doing we're putting together a, um, a website so again all of that information can then go on the website um, so once we've once we've collated all of that, we'll then be able to go out to the schools, and we're going to be asking um, salon owners to be able to contact their local school and to be able to make contact with the right careers advisor and to be able to share. It's going to help on two different levels. One, it's going to be able to you've got that first contact. So even if you're not recruiting right now, now's the time to be able to get the foundations in place. Um, so going out to the schools virtually, obviously at the moment, getting to speak to them during their careers week. The careers week is between the 1st and the 5th of March this year. And a lot of them are going to be virtual. So it's a, it's a great way for us to be able to have a video call like this with students, and to be able to answer the questions that they want to be able to, you know, ask us. So there's a few different things that we can do. So, I just think yeah. the campaign is hugely important as someone who has struggled to find an apprentice this year because there literally isn't anyone, especially with all the lockdown and COVID that's going on. People have like struggled and don't, sort of haven't really had the careers advice on how to get into an industry. So I think now is more important than ever. And I think the campaign, because everything is digitally now, I think a digital campaign is where it needs to be going and like fine tuning that way. So. Do anybody need to hashtag or how do they, once I've got the videos, yeah. where do they send them so, to? Um, hashtag choose hair. If you go onto our Facebook page, um, we've got all of our ambassadors on there and there's um, in the announcements our ambassadors. Send your video to any one of the ambassadors or to myself and we'll upload that and we'll be putting that on our Instagram as well. And something that I'm looking, I'm really excited about, that um, we're in the early stages of doing at the moment, but we're looking to be able to do a scholarship as well. So it will be a hairdressing scholarship because what part of the issue that we have is that for underprivileged families, um, their benefits, if they were to take on an apprenticeship rather than sort of go to college, their benefits do get cut. We've then got the parents that um, quite frankly find it really difficult to be able to survive without that income coming in. So we're looking to be able to do a hairdressing scholarship. So it's really going to be an elite scholarship for people that really want to come into the industry, are hugely passionate 
but maybe um, without scholarship they wouldn't be able to do that so that's another thing that's hugely uh, exciting so everyone needs to keep out keep an eye on out for that because that is something huge for the industry because i don't think our industry is one industry that's never had a scholarship scheme obviously i know in america there's a lot of scholarship schemes but in the uk it's not something that's widely done so i think that could be yeah. a big thing for the uk industry which is great so thank you very Absolutely. much for that yeah, well, we just want to, we need to get the blueprint for it done now. Once we've got that and all the little tweaks and we've made the mistakes, then we can then go much bigger with it. And um, so yeah, it's, I think it's going to be super exciting, definitely. Yeah, it sounds it. And then Zoe, for yourself, Concept Pair Magazine, is is it about three years old now? It is, yeah, it's three years in September. I don't know where the time's gone. I know. I was probably, I've been talking to you from the very beginning, I think. Um, so first of all, where can people get a copy of this magazine? How can they subscribe to the subscription? Well, um, what we do is we tend to send the uh, boxes of magazines directly to the lecturers and the training providers. Of course, with everything that's going on at the moment, uh, we, along with most other people, have gone digital for the latest edition. Um, so if anybody wants to head to our website, which is www.concepthairmag.co.uk, all of our past issues are on there. Um, so they, you can download them, you can read them for free. Um, if anybody looks at it and says, you know what, I need to get a physical copy for my learners or my salon, um, you can subscribe on there as well. Incredible. And then what I'm gonna do is carry on with the magazine. So as someone who's championed the magazine from the beginning, um, last year you launched the Concept Apprentice Awards. Obviously, in difficult times, it all got switched up and changed around because you did all your regionals and then income lockdown and you had to go again digital. So can you just touch upon why you created the, the like the Apprentice Awards and sort of how that's been going and where it's going now with this year coming into play? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, last year we launched Concept Hair Apprentice of the Year um, and I absolutely love the competitions. Um, it is just so, it's so inspiring to be able to go into the colleges and to meet the learners, meet the lecturers and see what they can do. And I think I just love the journey that they go on with regards to like the confidence um, and watching people turn up looking very, very nervous um, and then really kind of flourishing during the day um, and during the course of the competition. So the competition is there's something for everybody. We designed it specifically, so it's quite a full on day. Um, there are categories for styling, hair up, uh, barbering, colouring and avant-garde. So whatever you're into, you can come and um, have a go, be part of uh, the experience and um, put yourself up against your peers. Um, and it's a great way to because in 2020, we were in the colleges and we had multiple people traveling into one regional base. It was a great way to kind of meet um, meet peers and, and form a community in the wider part of the colleges. Um, and we were absolutely thrilled with the numbers and, and how it worked 2020. Um, as you um, um, were quite spot on about, we got to the sixth uh, regional heat and then unfortunately the final was due to be in March 2020. Um, so we, we pushed the pause button and flipped it over onto a digital platform uh, for the finals, um, which I think is probably one of the best things about the fact that we work with a predominantly Gen Z audience. You know, it, it's flipped over completely completely um, and, and still gone down really, really well. Um, we relaunched uh, for 2021 and we had just under a thousand applications come in for the competition just before Christmas. Wow. I know it, it was quite mind blowing. Um, That's it's amazing, past, isn't it? It surpassed all expectations and we, we were just thrilled that the engagement it's still there even um, you know when they can't get into colleges they're so keen to be a part and to take that step and take ownership for their careers and and being part of this um, and we have just announced the finalists so our team of expert judges um, so all of our wonderful sponsors um, provide judges so uh, the competition is supported by L'Oreal Professional, uh, Cloud9, Wall, Bettertons, the Fellowship and we also work with our education partner VTCT um, and they've managed to whittle down all the submissions down to 150 finalists um, who are now 
eagerly working on their final uh, looks and creations, which we're going to be having in by the middle of March. Um, and then we're going to be holding a final, it's going to be a virtual final, which will all be on social media um, towards the end of April, uh, where we will take the 150 finalists down to 48 shortlists. Um, and we will announce the winners in each of the eight categories um, and then crown an overall learner of the year. We did rebrand the competition this year. We took it from Apprentice of the Year down to Learner of the Year or changed it to Learner of the Year, mainly because of wanting to embrace the very apparent inclusivity of the hairdressing industry. And we are also very conscious that unfortunately a lot of apprentices lost their apprenticeship in 2020, which is something we still want to very much support. You know, when you're learning, when you're going through your qualifications, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there and say, look, this is what I've created. This is my step into competing against my peers. So we're embracing um, the change of name and they're still embracing the competition. And I've been absolutely blown away by the first round looks. The quality of the submissions were was overwhelming. And yeah, I'm very excited to see uh, the final um, pieces of work that are coming in. Amazing. Like, all I'm going to say is we have a special guest um, who is joining us and he's going to go on a separate screen. So we're just going to insert him in that right now. It's just me interviewing him. And it's about, he was the, I met him at the Midlands regional final, uh, regionals last year. And he won for level two barber. And then he went on to win the overall. And he, as someone who isn't a barber, I'm a hairdresser, I focus on colour and styling. He impressed me so much that I'm actually doing a, a collection and he's gained the opportunity to come and work on that shoot with me. So we're just going to introduce Samuel Wilson and then we'll come back and we'll have a quick chat about him. So welcome, Sam. Thank you for joining us on Takeover Talks. Um, we have just gave you a bit of an intro. If you want to introduce yourself properly, let us know where you work, how long you've been in the industry. It'd be great. Yeah, so um, I'm Sam Winston. I've, I work at Robert Ashley Barbering in Derby and I've been in the industry for about two and a half years now. Yeah, uh, and what attracted you to working in the hair and barbering industry? To be fair, where I worked that before I was a bar, like started barbering or anything, I went, I went in the shop that I got an apprenticeship in and it was just the atmosphere really like drawed me in. And then I got quite close to the barber that I was going to work there and asked him if I could get an apprenticeship. And I was lucky enough to, and I was, I was at an age where I usually wouldn't take my age on because I was older than like, I was nine, well, nearly 19. Yeah. Um, so I was quite lucky to, to get that opportunity up and to be fair. Uh, which is great. Obviously it's nice to hear that people are still taking older people on. Oh because, yeah. Uh, because obviously the rate of pay is normally higher. So it's good yeah. that obviously Rob, who we but obviously I know as well, did take you on and gave you the opportunity. Oh, obviously, God. you know how we came into contact. I met you at the Midlands Heat of Concept Hair Awards. And yeah, yeah. You, you did impress <laughs> me. I'm not a barber, as you can tell by the uncut hair. Um, but well, you I'm impressed me. <laughs> <laughs> so you did impress me, obviously, as you, you handled yourself well, you performed well under pressure. And from that, I contacted you and said, look, I'd love to work with you. And we're going to do a men's shoot sometime this year when COVID buggers off. But what yeah. pushed you to enter the Concept Hair Awards? To be fair, um, my tutor at college uh, yeah. pushed me to do it because I'm not the kind, I'm quite a nervous guy. So I thought like doing a haircut in front of a load of people is just not the best thing <laughs> for me. But she pushed me to do it and she said, you, like, you, you're too good not to. And I was like, I, I'll have a go. And then ended up actually loving doing it. Like it was yeah. such a surprise how good it was. The atmosphere. And obviously I get, get to meet you and you've given me this opportunity to help you with your shoot, which is amazing. Well, so, as you keep saying your shoot, it won't be my shoot. I've always told you it's our shoot and that's the way our I work. Shoot. <laughs> our shoot. So remember that. Um, but how did you feel on the day? Obviously, for someone who is an apprentice, how did you feel about entering a war, like an award competition for the first time? That moment when you walked through the doors in, I don't know where in Midlands it was, but you walked through those doors and yeah. walked up to that podium where you have to sign in. How did you feel? My first initial feeling was, like I was nervous but yeah. as soon as I sat down and 
uh, like it was as soon as I went into the room to do the competition, you just nerves go out the window and you just got to go for it. There's no, there's no other way to, <laughs> you just can't not do it. So sure. Yeah. It, and obviously that moment when you get told the timer starts and you've got judges that are big names in the industry walking around and I'm sure there was a lady that had her phone torch at some points oh, walking yeah. around. <laughs> How does that feel being under pressure and watching someone like that up in your area when you're trying to work? That was the when I saw that she, she had a phone light going up to it was obviously where we'd been fading to see if we could see any lines or anything. I was like, oh god, <laughs> it is it's quite a serious thing. But yeah. um it, it was good. I, I liked being under pressure to be fair. It, yeah. it it made me work better, which is a bit different, but <laughs> it was it was good, it was really good. And how did it feel having your boss as your model? Uh, was, was it worse? Less, I, I was less nervous because it was him. Yeah. Uh, I've cut his hair a couple of times and it was a, one of the first people I ever cut his hair was. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that he's got hard hair to cut as well, that, that made me a bit nervous, but it, it was it was good. It was nice to have him there, to be fair, good support and stuff. And he's always supported me in everything that I do. So. Yeah. And then that moment where we're all stood in that uh, that the hallway and it's like you, yeah. you're hearing and you first hear that you haven't come run, runner up or was it first and no third, second and then first, was it? I think I think it was, they announced third. Yeah, third, yeah. second and then it was first, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. How did you feel hearing third, second and not know, knowing it wasn't you and then hearing that you was the winner? What did what was that accomplishment like? How did you feel? I, I was over the moon to be fair. When, when I started to hear like third went, and I was like, all right, it's still got second and first. And the second went, I was like, oh God, there's <laughs> like, where's it, where's this going? And then I heard my name. I was, I was buzzing to be fair. I, yeah. I wasn't expecting it. So it was good. It was really good. And then obviously you were meant to do the finals and then income COVID screwed all the plans up and it got announced that it had to go digital. What did yeah. you think when you heard that it all had to go digital? How did you find the digital side of the competition? Um, it was all right, to be fair. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that I didn't get that experience of going to London and having like the, all the atmosphere and stuff. Instead, I was just doing it in the shop with me, my boss and my model. Uh, mm. it, was, it was OK. I, I did enjoy doing it, to be fair. It, it was sort of... I, I still felt motivated. It, yeah. It, yeah, it was still good. It was still good because concepts were pretty good in that, in like sending me the T-shirt and uploading everything online. I thought that was quite a good idea, to be fair, what they did. Uh, and where did you get your inspiration from? I know you sort of was given guidelines, but then you had to shoot it in a certain way. And obviously, when you're shooting a, an image for a competition, it really does matter how you place the model, how you make them look. Obviously, all that was down to you. You were just told that you needed to create a look based on a theme. And then the way you took the images was down to you. So how did you come up with that? Or was there any support you got? Um, I came up with the image on, by myself, to be fair. I was I was always going to go for the more of the Great Gatsby look. I just think there's more skill involved in that rather than like everyone's doing a skin fade nowadays. Everyone can do it. It's probably yeah. every, every shop should be able to do a skin fade. It's more of the classic cuts that everyone struggles with and scissor work. You so say that I'd, Every, I'd, everyone should be able to skin fade. Well, no, uh. not everyone. But, <laughs> uh, like that's that's so dominant in barbering now, skin fades and stuff. And mm. I think scissor use scissor cuts are coming back in more purely scissor cuts. Uh, there's some like quite big barbers doing quite a lot of tutorials on it at the moment throughout lockdown, which is pretty cool to be fair. But I just thought if I if I do the same thing that I did, not the same but similar, from the first heat, um, like it should it should be alright. And the 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 person that I had in for that shoot had such better hair than the first one, so it just it just emphasised the look that I wanted so much better as well. Which just I remember your your first model was your boss, so behave. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> And then obviously with that, you then had to enter it. You had to email them all across. And then obviously the final day came where you were waiting for the announcement to go live on social media. What was the wait like? Because obviously as someone who enters competition myself, 
it yeah. is an like an anxiety like provoking experience isn't it? that horrible nervous weight exactly. because you, not only was you winning the title of barber of the year like apprentice barber of the year but you're winning a lot of like tools and equipment as well so the, the pressure's there because you're going to win a lot of stuff and the attention that you've gained now through the industry is quite big yeah so how is that feeling on the finals not, regionals is hard anyway and but the mm -hmm. thing is you you found out that day but then to enter your image and then have to wait two or three was it two three four weeks after yeah it was three it was three weeks yeah yeah how was that wait what was the horrible. the nerves the anxiety like <laughs> it was horrible that day was horrible like it was me and my rob my boss at work just us two and like i was cutting hair and i was just I, the only thing i could think about was it i couldn't i wasn't even thinking about anything else other than that and i, I think it was they, obviously i think they started off with the hair up announcing that which was about 12 o'clock and mine was about three so i had to wait i think yours was like one of the last ones weren't it yeah it was horrible yeah and probably the worst feeling i've ever felt but once i heard i won that it was in the best day ever to be fair and how did you how did you find out was it did someone contact you did you just see it on social media um like you know how you can keep refreshing your instagram i was just kept yeah. refreshing instagram and then rob wouldn't let me look and he i'll let him look first and obviously it was simon shaw from wall that announced it yeah. uh, which was wicked to be fair to get noticed by him yeah and then obviously to win all that bundle of prizes that you've gained what does that mean for your career obviously you've now won all that that all, that equipment is yours so are you putting it to good use well i know we're in lockdown again but are you putting going to be putting that to good use what are you going to use oh, it for are you going to do shoots a year i, I want to carry on doing as much as i can competitions photo shoots um i want to get into more of the photography side of it now as well because that seems to be going off um yeah. uh, i just want to showcase my work a little bit better rather than just use my iphone <laughs> but yeah uh yeah I, I, well i've not really had a chance to put them to use yet because i've only been in the shop for like i think it was like four months and then we were back off again so i know it's been a nightmare hasn't it but you just touch upon photo shoots there obviously when we do our photo shoot i don't i can cut gents hair but i can't skin fade so obviously it'd be a really uh, like a proper collaboration of the hair cutting techniques and the styling yeah. and that image will get out there and obviously this is like what it was the important thing for you at turn to what have you gained rather than just the title obviously there's working with myself but that industry recognition what does that mean to you um it's probably it's nice to get recognized obviously and to meet you and like obviously simon show announced the winner he's such a big name in barbara well, wall um but it's more of the confidence side the amount of confidence it's given me that i benefit the most i think it's given me just yeah. that boost of confidence and not to not doubt myself in anything that i do yeah which is nice absolutely. i don't obviously you are you still doing an apprenticeship have you finished that now uh so the day i found out that i won the competition the day after i had my end point assessment um yeah. and then the two days after that no the day after that it was my 21st birthday and then the day after that i found out that i passed so then so you had it so you're fully qualified barber now yeah yeah fully qualified which is amazing so obviously using your experience why would you recommend people who are, are learning in the hair hair industry barbering industry why would you recommend entering the competition um i'd recommend entering uh one to boost your confidence push yourself out of your comfort zone that's the, the best way you'll learn um Obviously, seeing loads of different people, you see how they cut, and you could probably learn a few techniques from other people, as off they will learn from you. Um, and meeting, meet, <laughs> sorry, <I'm> sorry, <laughs> meeting new people, really. As, as yourself, yeah, I, I wouldn't have got the opportunity if I didn't to work with you. So, yeah, it's amazing. And then, obviously, it's a, just a quick, quick interview, but if people want to hear about you more, if they want to follow you on social media, where should they find you? Uh, so I'm on Instagram at Sam the Barber. So Sam D A Barber underscore. Yeah. And yeah, that's the only. That's the only. And app. if they want to see where you work, what's the business name? What's what's the salon uh, you work at called? 
the salon I work at is Robert Ashley Barbarin, and it's on Chester Green. Um, <laughs> sorry. This is what so happens when we do recording. It's fine. Don't worry. At the door, my dog's going insane. <laughs> That's fine. But yeah, thank you very much for taking time out today, Sam. No, it's really you. interesting. People will get to hear why, it, why it's important as an apprentice to enter these awards. So I'm going to throw it back to the girls now. So thank you again. No, thank you. Cheers, Daryl. So Zoe, tell me a little bit about <clears throat> Sam. How did you feel about him and his journey in the competition? Um, Sam, Sam was awesome, you know, um, he had huge amounts of personality um, and again going back to as I was saying you can see the journey through from people walking in and that slight hint of trepidation of well, what's it going to be like it's a brand new competition it was new for everybody I know you and I were talking Daryl at, at the Midlands Heat about you know lots of people looking around not quite sure what this was the format and, and how we were doing it and of course the added element that we brought big industry names in with us to who were going to walk around look at their work ask questions give some feedback um so yeah no sam sam was great you know it was it was great to see his work um once he'd finished preparing his look you could see he visibly relaxed um and it uh, started to move and become you know more smiley and talkative which was awesome um and then you know i i was really thrilled for him to to move forward into the final and and then of course for him to be ultimately one of the winners um just an amazing result um as with all of our finalists just it, it was lovely to watch them progress and the way that their work stepped up from the different rounds as well. I know that was a lot of the feedback that we had from our judges. So our head judge, Jackie McIntosh from VTCT. Um, and I know specifically with barbering, um, Simon Shaw from Wall um, is part of the, the barbering judges panel. And he very much said the progression through the competition was very evident and, you know, the, the win um, much congratulations to Sam. I think, as we we all agree, um, he's got a great future ahead of him. Totally, and I know there's obviously we've we've in, asked, we asked Sam to join us because it's someone who I'm going to be working with in the future. But I I know there was a lot of your students that were picked up by some of the names that were judging to gain opportunity opportunities. Like there's someone that went and worked with Casey Coleman, and there's a load of other people that have been picked up. So this competition is really good for getting themselves out there and to be picked up and to be able to gain opportunities. Absolutely. And, and that's very much what we're trying to do. It's, I suppose, because hairdressing is such a visual platform um, and people that are taking part are so creative and so entrepreneurial, what we wanted to do was give a platform from the very, very start of their careers. Um, and we do, you know, a lot of shouting out every edition, every month, we ask people to tag their work so that we can post it on social media and, and show the industry what they're doing and, and how amazing their work is. And for that very reason, you know, they, the industry want to embrace and help and cultivate um, the future. And this is the platform so that they can, can come and spot the future talents. And, you know, we're, we're thrilled to be part of that. And, and have to really say a massive thank you to everybody that's supporting what we're trying to do. Um, I was quite blown away. Again, as I say, it's only three years. We we didn't have a background in the hair industry whatsoever. Um, I remember sitting in front of a very, very large client, um, showing them one of my other um, magazines, which, as you can imagine, sitting in front of someone very, very important within the hair industry, showing them my plumbing magazine um, at the time was somewhat nerve wracking. Um, but you know what? Even from the very outset, it was embraced that it is so important to support the future of the industry. Um, and from all the brands to all the partners such as yourself, Daryl, and all of the judges that came along, you know, Robert Eaton, Ashley Hodges, Casey Coleman, you know, we were blown away by the support. And I think that's what's so special about the hair industry and and why I think the campaigns um, that Emma's doing, you know, to show everybody the amazing opportunities that are available and also the support that comes from the industry that's so keen to nurture its own, that really does need to be shouted about and celebrated. 100%. And you just touched upon, again, the campaign there. And 
the campaign for me, obviously, we've touched upon about how we can get the, it into the schools and stuff. But as you've mentioned earlier, Emma, sometimes it's the parents. How can we educate the parents with this campaign as well to understand that the hair industry is an industry that people need to be coming back into? Um, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to have um, some little videos that we're going to be putting together, short videos so that they can dip into them really quickly and be able to actually have a look at exactly um, the questions that they want to have answered. So they quite often they want to know how long is the training going to be, what sort of training, how is that going to be delivered, what is the salary, how, you know, and there's all those kind of questions that need to be answered. So all of that information will be on our website. So we will have it in a form where they can read it, but they can also click on little videos as well to be able to get that information. Um, the parents are crucially important that we do get them on board. Um, we're also working with the salons as well to be able to educate salons as to how to take on an apprentice. Because a lot of the time they are 16, they've just come out of school. Um, if if um, if your child goes to a a college, for instance, you would go with that child to the college, and you would be speaking to the tutors. It's exactly the same within the hair industry. Um, just because it's called an apprenticeship, you still need to be able to get the parents involved so that they can support that student at home as well as when you're in the salon. And it just makes it a much tighter unit for everybody to really sort of work together. And just quickly, with the campaign, I have seen, as someone who's followed the campaign for a while now, um, people ask a question, is the campaign age related or is it open to anybody who wants to come into the industry? It's open to anybody that wants to come in the industry. Um, the, the, the focus of the campaign has been, to begin with, has been the students in schools, purely because we've lost so many students. So that's, you know, where we're looking at. But anybody that wants to come into the industry can go onto the website. We'll be able to have all of those questions answered. We've also got all of our ambassadors on there as well. So if they want to be able to reach out and ask any questions, then um, they're, they're more than happy to answer those questions. So it's a real support hub for everybody. That's amazing. Thank you very much. And then we're going to go back to Concept Hair magazine. So obviously you've got the Learner of the Year Awards, which used to be the Apprentice Awards. But within that, you also do learner of the month, which I'm very kindly, you asked me to be a judge for this for going forward with Let Lou and Lexi. Um, how do people who have missed out on the learner of the year, how can they get involved in learner of the month? Uh, well, learner of the month is, as it says, our monthly competition, um, all through Instagram. Um, so what we're basically asking is for any um, students or apprentices who want to be involved to um, tag us using the hashtag ConceptHairLOTM. Um, and basically you will then go into the mix with your image um, the judges will then go and have a look on your profile, on your hair profile. So please make sure that your profile is open um, so people can come and have a snoop and make sure that you can get shortlisted. Um, it is a, as I said, a monthly competition. The hashtag is used. Six um, people are shortlisted down to being the, the finalists every month, which is sponsored by one of the lovely um, brand partners who give a lovely prize. Um, and we post out the shortlist um, finalists. And then it is a mix between the judges' decisions and social media voting to see who is crowned the monthly uh, learner of the month. And um, again, it's fantastic to see all the work um, and to see all the comments and the support, really. You know, like there's hundreds and hundreds of people who get involved. And, you know, again, we're absolutely thrilled and blown away by how people are prepared to put themselves out there and, you know, just showcase their, their amazing skills. Um, you know, what, what do you think, Daryl? You know, what, what did you think of last month? To be asked to come and be a judge was obviously an honour anyway, but the it was so hard. And even in the little group chat we've got, it's not an easy decision between the judges. And it's nice that each judge has their own opinion. We don't have to like make a decision like together. We put our results in and it's like those are given the number, like the, the feedback and stuff. And then you collate all the results together. So it's nice that we've all can have our own opinion. Um, again, a question I was just going to ask, the same sort of thing that I just said to Emma, is this competition age restricted? And also with lockdown, are they allowed to use doll heads to enter the competition? Uh, no, it is not age restricted. It's 
everybody welcome. Um, and yes, they definitely can use um, the doll heads. Um, jumping back on some of the points that Emma has just raised about, again, not having the restrictions in, in the Choose Hair campaign. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I know when we spend a lot of time in the colleges talking to people, um, there is a huge amount of people who are coming into hairdressing as second careers because of the flexibility that it can give them towards their like their home life um, situations um, and, you know, having children, childcare or, you know, other elements that they need to provide alongside their, their job and you know I think it's going to be give a major boost especially with everything that's very unfortunately happened in the last 12 months where there is going to be huge sectors where people will be coming out of potential roles and maybe looking at apprenticeship routes moving forward um, and I think the fact that we've got um, campaigns like this already well established and very well organized and thought through is going to be a major credit um, to the future of the industry because we will be able to kind of catch them straight away and say look you know look at all these amazing opportunities that are available to you do you want to be a freelancer do you want to travel the world do you want to be a session stylist you know whatever it is look look what's here Let, let's celebrate it please come and be a part of it and yeah, I think the inclusivity and, and banging the drum for what an amazing industry this is, is just so hugely important. Yeah, and I've got to say, as, as someone in the industry, I'm a salon owner, to have people like yourselves who are not hairdressers or not behind the chair, champion our industry is really, really important because it shows the passion that other people have for our industry as well. So having the campaign and having a magazine supporting our industry is hugely important. And I will say it on behalf of every single person that is champion news, it's thank you to both of you. Um, Zoe, um, how can people get in touch with you for the mag about the magazine? How can people find you on social media? What are the places that people can find you, like your website, your Instagram handle and your Facebook handle? Um, so, uh, website is www.concepthairmag.co.uk. Um, our handles, it's Concept Hair Mag on both um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, and like I said, with the hashtags, um, please everyone get involved in Learner of the Month. There's some awesome prizes up for grabs for um, February and beyond. Um, and it's hashtag Concept Hair L O T M. How long do they have to get their entries in this month? What's, what's the closing date? um i think they've got about three weeks left but all the information is on our website and we regularly post um on instagram and we put some reminders in the stories and things like that but also as well you know anybody who is producing any work while they are um, unable to be in college please tag us in it because we want to celebrate this we want to show everybody how committed you are to the industry um, and and just the wonderful efforts that are being made um, and do you know what for the people that maybe sat at home going oh do you know I can't do it at the moment because this is something we are very conscious of that we have a predominantly gen z audience and you know the mental health issues that this lockdown is causing again you know take a look come and see what we're doing let's see if there's anything that can help um inspire or or even if it's just something that you note down now and you think do you know what i'm going to try that when when i'm feeling more up to it we're, we're very much very very keen we have mental health mondays as one of our regular features because we do want people to feel supported um when we're going through these ongoing very strange times amazing that's great obviously mental health is something that needs to be uh focused on so obviously everyone go and check out concept hair and the same to you emma where can people find you what are the apps what are the hashtags people need to be using for the choose hair campaign okay so the hashtag is choose hair um, and that's that's it. it's literally just choose hair and um, we've got our facebook page which is choose hair again um our instagram is choose hair uk um so that's where you can find us on there so get in contact with me. I'm, I'm on all of the social media. So I'm under Emma B Talent. So if anybody wants to send me a message, please do so. And on our um, on our social media, we've also got all of our um, ambassadors on there as well. There's eight ambassadors. So please feel free to contact any of those ambassadors as well. Amazing. Again, I'm just going to quickly close this off and say thank you to both of you. It's been incredible and hopefully this inspires the next generation to join our industry and any everyone should will throw in the the apps and the how to find these guys on social media and thank you again both thank you Thanks, very Darryl. much thank you. bye